Uh, welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing a topic that has a very high likelihood of appearing on the ASVAB. Uh, that is, I'm going to discuss the distance formula. Um, before I do that, however, I want to take a minute to talk about the Pythagorean theorem, which is a topic most of you are pretty familiar with. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem, in case you forgot, uh, is used in regard to right triangles, which we have right here. And more specifically, it's used uh, to find any length of a right triangle, uh, that is A, B, or C. Uh, to do that, you use the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Again, that is called the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so let's do a problem involving the Pythagorean theorem. And once we do that, we'll see how it relates to the distance formula. Um, so let's say I gave you this triangle right here that had a height of 3, a length of 4, and I asked you to find the unknown length, let's call it C. Again, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, since this is a right triangle, to do so. Uh, again, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now in mathematics, it's customary to put the variable for which you're solving first, uh, which means it's customary to put uh, c in this case first since we're trying to solve for c. So that would look like this if we rewrote it. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Similarly, uh, as it stands, this equation says we're solving for c squared, not just c. Uh, to get c by itself, which is what we're trying to solve for, we can take the square root of c, and what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side of the equation to keep it balanced. By taking the square root of a square, these cross out, we're left with c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now to solve this, it's just a matter of plugging in your missing variables, which you already know. So let's go ahead and do that. C equals A squared is going to be 3 squared. Again, we said 3 was our A. So let's plug 3 in for A. And our B, likewise, is going to be 4. And that's squared in this formula. Let's keep working this out. Uh, 3 squared, as we know, is 9, and 4 squared, as we know, is 16. Uh, the square uh, 9 plus 16 is going to be 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. Okay, so that's how you use the Pythagorean theorem to solve uh, the length of any missing side in a right triangle. In this case, we solve for its hypotenuse. Now, let's take that concept that we just learned or relearned and relate it to the distance formula. Now, uh, generally, the distance formula, you're asked to use the distance formula in one or two inst instances. You'll either be given a graph with two ordered pairs, or you'll just be given the ordered pairs by themselves, and you'll be asked to find the distance between them. In this case, um, I've given us two ordered pairs, namely 1, 4, and 5, 1, and I want you to find the distance between them, okay? Now, at this point, you might be saying, I know I need to use the distance formula, but I forgot what it was. Now, if you know the Pythagorean theorem, you should be able to memorize the distance formula pretty easy. Because if you take a look at what we have so far, we just have two points in a line. But if we were to enclose this into a shape, you can see that we can pretty easily make a right triangle. And in that case, this, like above, would be our A. This would be our B. And this would be our C. And like above, we're being asked to solve for C. Now that said, the only difference between what we have above and here is... Uh, you were given A and B. In this case, you have to find out what A and B are. 
with the information that you have. To do that, you can simply count these squares. That's one way to do it. One, two, three, four. That's certainly correct. And count this A, one, two, three. But that said, there has to be a mathematical way to do that so that the formula works no matter if uh, you know, you're dealing with very large or small numbers or even decimals where you couldn't count these per se. And it, as it turns out, uh, what you do is you assign this 5, 1. You make this your x2, y2. And you say this is your x1, y1. Okay? And to find b, you can see that we're, we're just dealing with the x values. We want to find out how long b is. Well, that's simply 5 minus 1. In other words, that's x2 minus x1. Okay? And similarly, to find the height, you, would, you might think to yourself, well, that would be y1 minus y2, which be 4 minus 1. While that's true, you cannot mix, uh, you cannot mix those equations like that. So we're going to say this is going to be y2 minus y1. In other words, 1 minus 4, which will give us a negative. But that's okay. And why is that okay? Again, we're using the Pythagorean theorem, which contains squares to solve this. So right now, we can go ahead and start plugging things in to see how we're going to solve this. And again, instead of using C, I'm going to use D because we're trying to find the distance. And I'm concerned with this right here. Again, we're solving or this right here, not that one. Again, when we're solving for D, we want to find uh, A squared plus B squared. Well, it's going to be very similar to this. It's going to be the square root of A squared in this case would be Y2 minus Y1 uh, squared plus, and then B in this case, as we wrote it, would be X2 minus X1 squared, okay? And just like that, using the Pythagorean theorem and using Y2 minus Y1 and X2 minus X1 in place of A squared and B squared, we've derived the distance formula. Now, typically in the distance formula, this x2 and comes before the y's, but it does not matter. They're interchangeable. Okay, so now that we've derived the distance formula using uh, the Pythagorean theorem, let's go ahead and plug things in and solve. And just like the Pythagorean theorem, at this point, once you've gotten the formula, it's a matter of plugging things in and solving accordingly. So let's start with our y's. Y2 we know is 1. Y1 we know is 4, so that's going to be 1 minus 4. Again, it's going to be negative, but we're going to square it, so it's not that big of a deal. And similarly, let's find our X2. We said this was X2. That's going to be 5. And our X1 is going to be 1, so that's 5 minus 1 squared. Let's keep solving this. Uh, 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 3 squared. 5 minus 1 is going to be 4 squared. Let's keep going. Negative 3 squared. A negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So we know that's going to be 9. Uh, 4 times 4 is 16. Uh, 9 plus 16 is going to be 25. Square root of 25, as we know, is 5. So as you can see, the distance formula is the same as the Pythagorean theorem, whereas here you use A and B. Here you use uh, ordered pairs, namely Y2, Y1, referring to A or B, and X2 and X1 referring to A or B. 
So that's it. Uh, that's how those two are related. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, X2 usually comes before Y2. And as you can see right here, that's how you go from the Pythagorean theorem to uh, the distance formula. So all that said, uh, you do want to commit this formula to memory. Thankfully, uh, if you can remember that uh, it's the same as the Pythagorean theorem, you should always be able to remember it. But that said, let's do some practice. Uh, let's go ahead and do number three. Again, you want to identify the first first thing you do, you want to identify your x1, y1, your x2, y2. Uh, as I mentioned in the first problem, I like to set the point that's the farthest to the right as my x2, y2. Uh, so in that case, I'm going to let this point be x2, y2, and I'm going to let this point be my uh, x1, y1. And now I'm going to identify the ordered pairs. Um, this one is 0, 3. And then this one is going to be negative 2, uh, 4. I'm going to jot down the distance formula since I can't see it up there. Again, distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus uh, y2 minus y1 squared. Uh, it's just like the Pythagorean theorem. Let's plug in our values and solve. Um, x2 is 0. Again, those two correspond to each other. Minus x1 is negative 2. Again, that's squared. Plus uh, my y2, which is 3. Minus my y1, which is 4. And again, that's squared. Let's keep solving. Um, 0 minus negative 2. Negative, negative becomes positive. So this is just... Uh, 2 squared. 3 minus 4 is 1, which leaves you with negative 1. So that becomes negative 1 squared. Okay, so we're left with uh, 2 squared, which is 4, plus negative 1 squared. Anything negative times negative would be positive. Negative 1 times negative 1 would be just positive 1. So we can see that this is the square root of 5. In other words, the distance from this point to this point is the square root of 5. But again, like in the previous problem, let's say the ASVAB gave you the answer choice as a decimal. How can you quickly go from square root of 5 to a decimal form? Again, it's very simple using mental math. We would say what square gets us closest to 5? Uh, 2 squared gets us 4, so that's a good choice. 3 squared gets us 9, which is too big. So we know this answer is going to be 2 point something. And uh, what we're going to do is do 2 squared is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. We're going to take that 1 and put it over the double of 2, which is 4. So I'm going to say that this decimal is going to be about 2 0.25, but that said, I'm going to drop off this 5 because this only works with one decimal place, and I'm going to say it's about 2.2. Let's go ahead and pull up our calculator and see if that works. Again, square root of 5 is 2.2. So again, we're able to solve these without using a calculator. Uh, calculator really is a crutch. Uh, that you should only use if you're good with, if you're if you're competent with your mental math. Um, so let's go ahead and do number five again. We're using the distance formula, so let's go ahead and jot that down. Oop. Distance equals the square root of um, x two minus x one squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. 
again, uh, as I mentioned for the first two problems, I like to identify my X2, Y2, as well as my X1, Y1 first, just to keep things in order. And I like to identify the one that's furthest to the right, farthest to the right as my X2, Y2. And similarly, I like to say the other one is always going to be my X1, Y1. Let's find the real values of these. This is negative 1, negative 4. Okay. And this one is negative 5, negative 4. So now that we've identified our points, it's just a matter of plugging them into the distance formula. And, oops, getting a little sloppy here. Let's go ahead and fix that. Let's plug things in accordingly. Our um, x2 is going to be negative 1. Our x1 is negative 5. So this can be minus negative 5 squared plus our y2, which is right here, negative 4, minus our y1, which is also negative 4. Okay, so with that plugged in, let's keep solving. Distance equals the square root of negative 1 minus uh, negative 5. This really becomes positive, so this is negative 1 plus 5, which becomes 4 squared, and we have 4 minus negative 4. Again, minus minus becomes plus. Negative 4 plus 4 becomes 0 squared. Let's keep solving. Uh, now we have any 0 squared is just 0, so we're going to disregard that. We're left with uh, 4 squared, which is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. So we can see that this one is just 4. And since this is a nice big chart, we can see that this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we know we got it right. Okay, so that was that one. So that's all I had for you in this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, more specifically, I hope you were able to make the connection between the Pythagorean theorem and the distance formula. Um, when I took the ASVAB, I remember seeing a question regarding the distance formula on it, and it was a matter of simply plugging numbers into the distance formula and solving accordingly. If you can do that, it should be a very easy problem for you. Uh, but on that note, uh, feel free to uh, leave some feedback in the comments section below. In addition, please subscribe to my channel if you find my content helpful. Uh, but of course, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.